Today, it's all about busting those myths about Cato polyclay. <laughs> now, there is quite a hubbub around Cato clay on YouTube by veteran polyclayers and artists and crafters surrounding Cato clay. I don't know whether me coming into it at a later day, at such a late date. Um, and when I started getting into polymer clay, I bought all the products from, from Polyform. I bought, you know, Sculpey, Sculpey 3, Sculpey Souffle, Colored Sculpey. I, I was Sculpey to the max. I was just, I just went right into it. And as soon as I opened the package, I couldn't use it. Um, bearing in mind, I was, I did have some experience using the regular pink Sculpey and had no issues at all. But I just found that my allergies got really set off as soon as I opened the package. Watery eyes, you know, closed throat. Not quite sure if it's the color in the Sculpey or the consistency. Um, I've noticed that when I, when I use sort of wet, semi-wet uh, products um, that I find that that's when I start to have my reactions, dermatitis, mostly sinusitis. Um, so was unsuccessful with the Polyform products. Looking for something else, couldn't get Cernet. I live in Canada. I'd love to try it, but couldn't find it. Stumbled upon some Cato polymer clay reviews. And I was really kind of sad um, because most of what I got out of it was that it had an odor, it had a strong odor, it was... Okay, so let me just tell you, I called my supplier, had a talk with her, and she suggested that I try a block of Kato. I got the Kato and I had no issues. So I have um, a list of um, comments <laughs> that I found on YouTube. And I'm just going to address those, starting off with myth number one. Kato has an odor. Okay, the truth is that Kato polyclay has a scent. It's the scent of vinyl. It's made of PVC, polyvinyl chloride, or in other words, vinyl. So should it have any sort of smell of colors. It does have a, a, a very, um, I find, slight scent. I had no issues with it. It didn't make my eyes water. I didn't have any sort of uh, reactions to it. And um, it was quite pleasant. It kind of reminded me of my days in kindergarten and playing with the uh, vinyl toys. So. Myth number one, and we broke that. It has a scent. It does not have an odor. Okay. Myth number two. Kato is hard to condition. And the truth is, Kato, um, I find, is easy to condition if you know how to do it. Okay. Kato is a thermoplastic. Okay, so it acts like uh, like butter. You warm it up, when it cools, it gets hard. You warm it up again, it gets very soft. You let it cool, it contracts and it hardens again. Okay, so if you think about Kato clay as a thermoplastic, our body temperature is a 98.6. If you hold the Kato in your hand just for a little while, you don't have to take it and bash it like some of the people on YouTube are saying. Bash it, get, turn it, like get that whatever the contraption is and, and pound it out. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is you need to hold it in your hand for about one to two minutes, and I have done this, and this is how I work. And all of a sudden, it starts to move. And then you can knead it with your hand. Right? Watch a video in the meantime, right? 
knead it with your hands, it's getting nice and soft. You know, get your roller out, roll it out nicely, you know, make it thin, then put it through your pasta machine. It's not difficult. It's not hard to condition. And we broke that myth. Myth number three. Kato looks like cheap plastic. Okay, so I heard somebody say that Kato, when baked, looks like cheap plastic and then you have to mix it with something else. Uh, I, have, I have a secret. Kato's plastic. Yeah, plastic. It's vinyl. Okay, it's plastic. Okay, it comes in great vibrant colors. And if you're looking at doing some sort of effects with any polymer clay, you're going to have to mix it anyhow. So, and eh, broke that. Cheap plastic, it doesn't even look like cheap plastic. It cooks and it looks like plastic. And if you want to basically get a different type of effect, there's tons of YouTube videos out there with Polyform products, Vimo products, Cerna products, and they will show you, and, and some Kato products as well, and they will show you how when you mix it and add little, you know, you know, paints and things like that, how to get other effects. So we broke that myth. Mm -hmm. Okay, myth number four. Kato kind of feels like a dry leather and eh, no, no. The truth is, nice fresh Kato out of package feels nice and smooth when it's conditioned. It has a nice shiny sheen. It looks a little bit, comes across like patent leather. Patent leather, which is dry. If you have a dry piece of Kato, you need to add something to make it a little bit more um, pliable and, and conditioned. And then start conditioning it some more until it gets a nice sort of liquidy feel. Not dry at all. Eh. Busted that myth. So next time, we'll be talking about how you can use wax um, as a form of prototyping and molding. That's how I got started, and this is for you, Resiners, so stay tuned, hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>